everyone. It's Paul from Alexander and Knife Sharpening and Laser Engraving. So just getting back into the swing of things, I am doing uh, well recovering from my hand surgery. I still have to keep the little incision mark uh, covered up and clean for a while. So I'm doing something I don't normally do, which is wear a glove. I usually never wear uh, anything when I'm sharpening, uh, but I did cut all the fingertips off so that I can still feel because uh, feeling is super important in your sharpening. You have to be able to feel, you got to be able to feel the burr. You get a lot of information from your fingertips. I had a little epiphany the other day. It's two more factors that are really super important in sharpening that I kind of took for granted. And I want to show you what happened. And I want to make sure that these are two factors that you are taking into consideration with your sharpening. During my time of not being able to sharpen, I decided I was going to rearrange my workshop. I got this really nice work pro workshop table for the X tool S one laser. And this thing's really cool. It it's height adjustable so I can crank it and raise it up. I can lower it down. It's on casters. You have a, a choice of options. It can be on uh, adjust height, adjustable, non-movable feet. So it can use these or it can be on casters that lock. I moved some tables around. I had some shop tables and I think I mentioned the other day, my downdraft table for my one by 30 was on a shop table. And I felt like that was a little bit of a waste and I'll show you what I did and what I'm talking about. So right over here, I opened up a whole new bench uh, for things to be able to work on, to be able to review things. I wanted to have a better spot for my microscope and for the uh, job boxes. So I moved this other bench that I didn't love over. I cut the end off of it. I mentioned that. And I moved my downdraft table for my 1x30s on there. And I started sharpening the other day. And I noticed the knives were not coming out like I expect. They weren't as sharp as I expect. And I was like, I mean, come on. I only took a week off. What, what is what's going on here? The first thing I noticed, and I at first I didn't think it was making a difference, but it makes a huge difference, is the height of what you're working at. And it makes such an, a, a difference that I'm actually going to just replace this entire bench with another WorkPro height adjustable table. But here's what I want to show you and talk about at a little a little bit closer. Uh, so what I noticed was I knew immediately that I, when I started working on here and I grabbed a knife to sharpen, I knew without question that the height had changed. About five centimeters was one thing that changed. And I also had moved some lighting around in here. At first I thought, ah, so what? So it's like five centimeters lower. Is, is that... Is this and this a big difference? But so I went about my sharpening like I normally do, my normal process, and I wasn't getting my normal typical results. And I was like, man, I, I mean, I took a week off. Uh, like, is it that it shouldn't be that, you know? Like, I've been sharpening for five years. And when I do one by 30 stuff, it's just bang, 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 bang. And I'm like, is it the height? Is it really the height? Is it the visual? The height? Is it the. You know, and I, I used to have a light back here that shined right on these and the same light I moved to the other side of the room. So the, what I did was I grabbed another knife out of this person's set and I said, you know what, let me just drop down to my normal old height that like looked normal for me. So I kind of dropped down the five centimeters and I started sharpening and I'm like, oh, my goodness it's that i changed the height of my sharpening tools and then i even noticed like that height change difference totally changed the lighting it changed the way i could see the burr of the of forming on the knife blade and i was like holy like i wouldn't have thought that five you know centimeters would make that much of a difference but it does. So I did the next knife 
just dropping down to like my normal height of what I was used to seeing and right back to my old results. And I was like, whoa, mind blown. Like, cause I literally wouldn't have thought that being, you know, five centimeters higher would have made a difference because it totally made a difference. So <laughs> I didn't want to tear the whole room apart because I literally, I switched a couple more machines the other day and it took me the whole day to do it. But I just made the decision that this table needs to go and I'm going to replace it with another one of those height adjustable work pro tables so that I can get this exactly where I where I like it for me. But my point is make sure you're paying attention to that, to your lighting and your height. The other thing I am going to do is because things were moved a bit, this table was over a little bit. I'm not sure if you can see it. I'm going to, I'm going to pan up. So my lighting's in a slightly different spot. I actually need to bring this out more so that I'm getting more light on the one by thirties. So I have to adjust my lighting. And then I had that other spotlight, which this is an old uh, photography light, which is also one of the reasons I have it in here is, is for filming things for you guys. So things that are lit well, but I'm really seeing the importance of how well that particular light and the setup of my lighting makes a huge difference in the quality of the sharpening that I'm getting. So I just wanted to point that out to you so that you can be aware of that. If you're constantly changing your setup or where you're sharpening, or especially like if you're doing mobile stuff and going to different places, the height that you're at, the, the, you know, the line of sight and the familiarity that you get doing something over and over and over again, even changing it by, in this case, it was about five centimeters made a difference. And I just wanted to kind of point that out to everyone that it might be a factor that maybe some of you like me, I, I honestly really never thought that that would be a big difference, but I guess after five years of sharpening and always being at that particular level, that five centimeter change made a difference certainly for me. So that's it. That's what I wanted to share with you all. I hope that helps some of you out. Think about your lighting, get good lighting, make sure your, uh, your sharpeners, no matter what they are, whether it's, you know, I, and I always do the same thing with my uh, Tormax. So when I'm on my Tormax, even though I keep it on a slider, I always slide them under the light. So I didn't always, this used to be on the other side of the room, the uh, overhead light there. Let me see if you guys can even say it. So up top there. So yeah, so this used to be on the other side of the room, but I would always point it at my Tormax. Now I have it over here and, you know, and it's like right down on it, but I can also angle this light over to the one by thirties to get some more light in on, on those. Just keep that in mind because I know for a fact when my Tormex are not lit up well, and sometimes, you know, it, it can be shadowing and different times of the day in the, sh in the shop and light coming through certain windows. Uh, I'll show you guys this too. Like I have certain windows blocked. You can see with this big white screen and that's because they sometimes just get almost too much light coming in. So by putting those like white screens on there, it made it a softer, easier to see light in here for sharpening. So that's it. That's uh, today's tip, which is think about your height and think about your lighting because they may very well be a factor in the quality of your sharpening because I found out it definitely is for me because once I changed it after years of being used to doing it a certain way, it definitely affected what I was doing. For me, the solution was, we'll go back to the same what you're used to doing. Mm -hmm.